I'm a bit nervous to start today's vlog um, mainly because I'm alone right now. Today we're gonna talk about life after SQ and all the different careers that I have taken on after SQ. A bit of a context, before SQ, my first full-time job was a polytechnic training banking officer role in OCBC. Two and a half years later, I went to learning lab to be a specialist associate teacher. And I really enjoyed my time there because I like kids. And prior to that, I've been giving tuition. I thought, yeah lah, it could be a career that I can won won sit down there for maybe the rest of my life. At the age of 23, I got a bit bored. And then I asked myself, at my second job, I really feel like that. Then what's next? I took a very different route and that's where I landed up in SQ. When I have decided to quit SQ, I started lining up uh, interviews and uh, looking at what other job roles that I could potentially go back into. And at the age of 27, I was like, wow, it really means I have to restart all over again. But no choice, because I really couldn't stand uh, being in Singapore Airlines. So I'm like, okay, I need to start somewhere. I will just need to bite the bullet and go for it. After I think one month or so of looking for a job, I was given an opportunity in a mortgage broker firm. And I'm very grateful that my back then boss decided to take a chance on me. I was there for only three months because in between, um, I have a Kui Sing lah. Uh, she is my sister-in-law's best friend. There is an opening in the bank back then and she feels that it's a very rare opportunity because without referral, you will never get in. I jumped at the opportunity because I also realised that before I landed the sales job at this mortgage firm, a lot of the banks would have seen my resume and be like, she went to the bank then she, she sidestepped and then went to education. Then she went to aviation to be in the service line. And now she wants to come back to the corporate world. Maybe she is a bit too fencing, you know, she's too distracted. I can also empathize why people don't want to call me um, after seeing my resume. Lah. So, so when she told me about that, I'm like, yes, please get me in. And that's when I realized that right after SQ, if you can secure a good referral, Ask your friend to refer you. Um, after three months, I decided to quit the mortgage firm and I went back into the bank. And this was the start of my career in product managing. And until today, I'm still very thankful to my sister-in-law's best friend, Joy. Thank you so much. I went into the bank and I've met my greatest colleagues there. There were a bunch of very fun, okay lah, quite young <laughs> back then, bunch of, uh, of guys. They really looked out for me uh, everywhere I go. Staying in the bank for another close to three years, I began to look out for more opportunities. I realized that, hey, you know, I need to refresh a bit of my skills, um, especially in the digital segment. And I started looking out. And again, every time I go for an interview, I have anxiety of how the person will look at me or think of me in terms of my resume. Because at that time, uh, when I was about to quit the bank job uh, at my third year, I was already 30 years old. And at 30 years old, uh, in terms of full-time job, maybe I'm on my fourth already. I feel la, they are just perceiving me as a job hopper. Every time I go for a job interview, I have a bit of anxiety because I know the questions they're going to ask me. I was at my downness. I remember um, during the, the second bank job, I already halfway through cannot take it already. Maybe six months, I really feel like, wow, this is not lit. Eh. Like, I really don't want to do this. But I want to prove those interviewers wrong. I want to show them that I'm not a job hopper and that I can minimally stay at that job for one year. And that was the biggest mistake of my life. Because during that one year, I destroyed myself. I wake up every day, right? At least one hour before work time. That time I was still work from home. And I would just sit in my living room and stare out the window for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And then tears will start rolling down my face. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, where do I go next? What do I want to do in life? What's my purpose? I don't know. I don't have answers to, to any of it. When I hit the one year mark, I told John, I'm so sorry. I'm going to quit my job. And he like, just 
quit. Actually, since six months into that job, right, he already tell me to quit my job. But I was like, no, I can't. I don't know why, who set the standards. But I tell myself I can't. Because if I do that, my resume will look like shit again. But the moment the one year hit, I was so relieved. I called in, I tendered, and I'm like, <sighs> I'm glad I did that. I stupidly, okay lah, not really stupidly lah. I went into a crypto company and that was really a breaking point for me because I was again only there for three months and the reason for quitting was mostly because of um, the language barrier. After that, right, I told myself, that's it. I'm going to take a career break. And during that period of time, John told me to not look for any job. Just focus on recalibrating yourself. Ask yourself, what do you want to do after? And what is your end goal? During that period of time, I think it was also a part of like COVID, after COVID here and there, right? A lot of people were focused on what is my purpose in life? And this conversation went on, I think, at least one, two years where I was so unsure of myself. I am not the, the master of any trait. And I, I don't know where else I should be going. I just feel very lousy about myself and I, I doubted myself a lot. The three months break, um, I was just reading and trying to change a bit of my mindset. And I even went to the park, opened up my uh, fold foldable chair and I just took out a book and read. And I felt so serene. Like, I felt that like, hey, you know, maybe after 10 years of, of slogging, I'm like, you know, I started working since 14 and then I look back, right? I've never stopped hustling for this long before. I've never, I've always on my toes and I'm like, you know what, it's all about money. I need to just keep getting a better job, getting a pay increment so that I can earn more and more and more and more money. Hey, but to what end? Like, should I seek contentment? All my other friends, they have been in their job for minimally five, six years really. And I, I compare myself to them. I'm like, what am I doing in my life? And at one point of time, I keep asking myself, was going to SQ a bad decision? Was it wrong to, to deviate a little from life? I'm like, no leh. I thought it was a very good setup. And looking back today, I don't think I would have done otherwise. The next job that I got after my career break, I'm still in it right now. And I'm in a happier place now. I like what I'm doing. And I think on the side, I also have a few side hustles that I try to push myself for. Well, one of it is uh, Diamond Atelier's. This is my best friend's brother's um, business where we customize bespoke rings. So if you're looking out for an engagement ring or wedding band or si dian zuan, come to me. I will make sure that I give you a best price. <laughs> I've also decided to support uh, startup organization that deals with uh, female fertility. It's called Taylor. I think I've never felt more fulfilled. I, I'm not saying that this is the end journey. I am going to constantly be seeking out things that can uh, further improve myself. But at, as at this moment, I feel quite happy la, with where I am. So John and I are very different in terms of our career. I have always been an employee. He has always been in a management role and then became an entrepreneur. So being a partner to an entrepreneur, it did give me some pressure in the way I developed my career and the way that I established myself. Because I also don't want him, you know, when he bring his wife out and, and people ask, oh, so what your wife do? And every time they meet me, right, I give different answers. And for the past few years, I have been, it has always been the case. Lah. I see him so collected at all times. And I envy that. Sometimes I look at him whenever I want to change job, right? I'll say, Bao, I'm sorry, but I really want to quit my job. And I don't know why I feel bad to him. I feel like I've let him down in many, many times. And he's always very supportive and said that, you know, it don't matter. Do what you think you will enjoy doing, he will always be, be supporting me. That was my greatest assurance. As for whether I feel that John is a safety net to me, somehow, yes lah. I mean, a bit of it, I feel yes, that 
even if I don't have a job in the, for like two, three months, I know he will be able to hold the house. But I cannot be so selfish and say that, okay, you continue tahan and let me go and see what I can do. Uh, let me go and find the most perfect job. No lah, I, I think must, must be realistic lah ho. John is going to share about his side of the story and I am going to also bring him to that one place that I felt that it was then and there I recalibrated myself to go an even longer road. So this is the park that I came um, during my career break and back then it's a lot about mindset so I went to buy this book called Manifest by Roxy Nafauzi. Who on offers? You don't have any I think it's, I really, okay, honestly, I think this one okay. changed me a bit. Uh, and it made me think differently. This kind of book, I see the title, I see it. Manifest. Ah. Seven Steps to Living Your Best Life. Okay. Then I just sat here admiring the view. Then I read my book, just sharing about how my career panned out. And I, I'm always very fearful of how you think of me. Whether you are judging me at the back. And I know sometimes you are very tired. That how come I keep quitting my job? The number of breakdowns that I have while you are still at your second job. I, I don't judge that you change job. I'm not a fan of being in a place where, where you are unhappy because I don't want to see you unhappy. Mm. I also don't think I need you to chase your career until like that. I think just be able to support then I can do the rest. Like, so, I gotta got do yourself, I can do the rest, you know? But where I think it frustrates me is not when you change job. Where it frustrates me if I feel like you didn't try enough to make this job a good job. You think so? You think I really never try to make it the job like that I can spend the next 20 years at? You really think so? You ask until whether you want me to be honest or the one? <laughs> be honest. I don't see it. Okay. When, when I mean trying, I, I don't mean that you didn't try your best at work because I know you are good at what you do and you got tried. But I feel like the investment into making sure that you have friends there, the investment to make sure that your bosses like you, mm. that your boss know what you are done, what you have done, mm. and then to want to carry the weight on your boss for your company. Ah. I mean, I'm sure you do to an extent, but I think I do to another level. Mm. So, when I see you leave a job, right, I'm not upset, but I just feel like this might have been it if you just put in another 20%. The grass is greener where you water it. But don't you think that every time I pluck up the courage to want to quit that job, right, it really takes a lot of effort and a lot of thinking into it. Like, I'm somebody, right, who invests a lot into colleagues, like mm. friendship. I yearn for that bond, you know. And I, when I have it already, it breaks me that I have to leave that job. Yeah. But I know deep down, right, that I'm not happy and I don't know how to chase that happiness. So many years ago when I'm feeling depressed, when I tell you that, you know, what's the purpose in my life and all, and you tell me that, hey, you know, don't seek purpose in your job. Seek purpose outside of your job. Use the money that they pay you to go and seek a more meaningful and purposeful life outside of it. I, I also brought that mindset together with me along those years. But when you are just not happy doing what you're doing, right? And you, I feel that my job is so easily replaceable and like, what but impact does that mean? What? Really? Yeah, to some extent. Like you want to feel impactful lor, at, yeah. at the place that you are at. And when you no longer feel that, then that's where I realized, hey, maybe then I should go somewhere else and see how much more I can, I can contribute to the company. Not saying maybe. that I can make an impact, just contribute and make me feel good. Let me give you an example. Everybody wants to lead a purposeful life. I think more often than not, it's because many of them have never felt like they led a purposeful life and they think that living a purposeful life is the answer, right? And I think that's fair enough. Just like how if you are not, if you don't have money, you think money is the answer. What I've come to learn is that purpose is intrinsic. It's something that you really need to find from within you, whether that satisfies you. There's someone here that cleans this park and they, f they find their purpose, right? And they find their purpose and that's it. You know, it doesn't have to be the next bigger and bigger thing. It doesn't have to be carrying the weight of the company or organization or department or the ministry if you're working in government on your shoulders. I feel like to an extent, many people try and seek that purpose, trying to seek a purposeful life. They don't find it in their own life because intrinsically they are not really doing it. And then they have this expectation, right, that their employer will provide them with a purposeful life. And employers try, I tell you, more, more than ever, employers do try. You see even like across, now I see people rowing the dragon boat, right? Like all these are corporate 
this, all these are corporate rowers, you know, like somewhere out there, uh, there's a bank uh, that sponsors some dragon boat and then they have a CCA and then they'll try and help you form meaningful bonds so that you can have clicks in the office so that you can at the end of the day, when you want to quit, you got one last line of defense to be like, then Terry, huh? I'm going to miss Terry, uh, you know? <laughs> like Terry needs me, uh, you know, like Terry is, uh, I, he asked me to be his mentor, you know? Yeah. But this kind of stuff is really on you and then companies do try to a certain extent. But you, there are companies out there that oh, you feel like you must be saving the planet. There are companies out there that is really just printing plastic to make chairs. Huh? And there's also happy people inside. But they just every day, they go and make more and more plastic chair. You know what I mean? And you can be happy one. And I always tell my, my colleagues in, in Gravity that like your work is not your life, you know? Take this money and then you go and find your life. Go and find your passion. Go and if you want to do good, then hey, don't expect the company to do good with you. I mean, we try to do as much as we can, but we are a profit-driven company. We have shareholders, <laughs> right? And it's not to say that I, I don't want to. I want to, right? Every year we adopt charities and stuff like that. Hey, uh, by the way, go, go for Shipping Hearts, eh? 19 October. This is our latest one. <laughs> Many of them start, they, they, they hope to find purpose in joy and they, they put it on their employer and some of them even turn very toxic about it. The fact that they feel like there is no purpose in the job. Then they, they feel like dead end, uh, this company. You know, no future. I, I, I see a lot of that. Being an employee, I see a lot of that. Like because colleagues, we talk. And across all the different organisations, I feel that I don't fault them from thinking this way. Because you spend most of your time at work just the same as how all your other colleagues, your bosses, they also spend the same amount of time at work. And everyone knows what you're trying to get out of your job. Like, mm. If your bosses don't empathize with you, then you feel that like, wow, because he has the money already. As an employee, I'm so I, I'm slogging so hard, right? But can't you even give me a bit of sympathy mm. in making my life better, mm. in making my life happier? Which I'm sure they can. Yeah, I'm sure they can. But I also know that this is not my employer's responsibility. Uh, so, so I've always been working in like big companies like banks and all, right? My boss alone cannot move the needle so much for me. It's the whole organization. And I do see that organizations are trying. They give like perks, work from home, extra off day, family day, all these kind of things. So when you move into a company that doesn't, then you will start comparing. So I think a lot of times, as employees, right, we start comparing with our friends. Like, wow, this, this place gives 24 days. This place gives 18 days. Then you start harping on the fact that, wow, ah, my, my company only gives me so little days. They must hate me. Yeah. They must be, don't value me. Yeah, but honestly, when I talk to John about these issues, I see the side from an employer. Like, by giving off days, you are incurring more cost. And when you incur more cost, you need to make more money to make up for it. And if your company don't make more money to make up for it, fire people. you start to fire people and people don't have a job. But on our level, we don't see it. We feel like employers owe us a living. Yeah. Like, hey, I work so hard for you, you should have given me. At the end of it, I, I see both sides. And that's why I'm always in a very big dilemma. I understand how employers feel, but I want to prioritize my own happiness. And that's why I changed job. Yeah. Because I know that the problem is not my employer. The problem is me. Do you feel the pressure to provide for the both of us back then when I was in and out of jobs? No. <laughs> we, we've always been at different crossroads, right? Because of NS, I, I started working two years later than you. Mm. So by then, you already got a bit of savings. Why you got credit card. You have miles, you know? And I just started an entry-level job. And I was already spending more than I earned, not on myself, but you know, on things. It was a struggle in my early career to try and just actually keep up. Such that at the end of the day, right, when you say that you want to go New York, yeah. but we pay ourselves. The fact that you can afford it, I want to say, okay, we go to New York, but we Dutch. Mm. Because our relationship has never ever been, you pay for me one, okay? Yeah. It was actually a whole period of trying to catch up to you and make sure that if you want to eat this restaurant, if you're willing to pay for yourself, I can afford. I got into credit card debt. I mean, shortly after you did also. But then that was super stressful, right? Then when you when you also get and then we we kind of balance out. That was when I think your job hopping started, and I never really did see the negative side of it because I feel like you do have a good reason to quit. Whenever you don't like something, it's either it's either the opportunity on the other side is really incredible and or there's something here that's affecting your long-term prospect. The truth is that when you jump, especially within the same or adjacent industry, your salary does get higher. Pet salary is not bad. <laughs> Thoughts? 
I don't want no comments no comments jumping you really do get higher so every time she jump I, I know it's gonna be something good because worst case scenario she won't die worst case scenario more of our friends will hire her I know for a fact or I will hire her I know for a fact that makes me feel like I have a safety net you know with that said I feel very privileged to know that even if one day I decide to quit my job and not do anything right I will still have something to do I feel like I can I can not con him lah but talk him into hire me leh <laughs> can you hire me <laughs> but also I know that I have the capability or I have the traits that he will hire if he comes to hiring someone mm. right in saying that right last time I won't hire her uh, out of pure competence we did this 16 years already uh. I started coming with me like 7 years ago right for the first four five years, ah, she every time joke about hire me, hire me. Then I see you go see the caliber of my people, or, like what the f are you? But in the last two years, right, you really become very smart. Eh? I feel ah, in the last two years, you super super level up. Like really, will hire you but cannot afford you. Do you at one point of time felt used? You think like how come she at the back of head never think about me? Then she keeps switching job. Is it she think that I'm the safety net? No. I think that I work very hard so that I can be your safety net. So when I get to be your safety net, I'm very happy. Like, Aww. like not happy, not very happy lah. <laughs> <laughs> like your parents should open not happy, but like happy it works, you know. Like it feels like if the the plane engine caught fire, I very happy. I pack extra parachute. Mm. Yeah. You think you think most men worry about this? Like they bring on the burden upon themselves to tell their wife that hey, it's okay. If you don't work, also never mind. Right, you know, men actually have this very strong burden of taking care of their wives. Yeah, I think to a certain extent, yes. Um, but I feel like to an extent, also see the quality of the wife. Lah. Some guys really very difficult. The wife really don't want to work and just want to buy things. I mean, I know people like that and it's just... It's just very draining. Lah. I don't care that this man not big enough for her. Lah. No man big enough for you. For women in sick of gender equality, when it comes to this part, right? I also heard stories before that like even though maybe you're on the same amount of money, they expect the men to pay for a lot more. I personally feel lah, if one day roles were reversed, I feel that I or I hope that I will be equally supportive. I think this is lacking in today's world where we have a lot, as women, we have a lot of privilege into going to this position. Like we can be vulnerable, we can tell you that, wow, you know, I hit my drive, wow, can I not work for three months? When roles are reversed, I hope I give you the same comfort knowing that, yeah, for you to, to know that you can really at one point of time take a break and it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because all of us really work very hard in, in where we are. And if one day you really need to take a break, I hope I can also provide you the sense of security that you can treat me as a safety net. I think being able to be my safety net is one thing. I think the emotional capacity to actually be a, a safety net is another thing. Emotional capacity. Mm. To say, take a break. You know, to actually be okay with it. Mm. And that's where, not, not say I'm not sure, but I think that's where I think it's very, very challenging for, for many people, especially in in this kind of societal context. You know? Mm. It's like a, can I, I, I can, um, but are you finding job or not? Can you go and find job? You still haven't find job? Are you looking or not? You know, that kind of stuff. I feel like on average, guys will have longer tolerance than girls in in that role. Yeah, they will be like, a, wow, he no job still want to, you know, uh, instantly want to wear the pants. You know, the kind of like, a, oh. it, despite who wear the pants, it's not like who make more money who wear the pants, you know, but I feel like, I don't know whether we'll get there or we'll let ourselves get there or you'll ever get to be my safety net for more than something, unless it's a health reason because I do feel like the ability to to be able to provide is something that I want to hold myself to. Mm. And if I cannot do that, then I'm not sure what I bring to the relationship. You know what I mean? I want to talk about good reasons to leave your job. Well, obviously any reason can be a reason to leave your job. Here are some things to look out for. I think the first one is whether you have a relationship with your employer and your colleagues, right? That allow you to grow or not. I think sometimes if you are with a supervisor that you simply don't get a long cock block and then you feel like this person gonna outlast you in tenor. Honestly, if you still love the job, talk to the big boss about it. If not, good time to go. So so you think bosses will appreciate when you we bring up the talk rather than we just quit? Confirm. No, but, but if I bring up the talk and then like, you know my intention is to quit already, then how? Then like, like, 
Won't you they, I'm not, not saying that You will cop block me But it's so awkward already Yeah there's a way To communicate that right You begin with saying I want you to know I love this job And that's why we're having This conversation I want to see myself here In 5-10 years But it's a bit challenging Right now Because of these reasons And I'm not saying It's so and so's fault mm. But I want to work here Because the alternative Would be just me Finding another job Mm. Uh, so I hope that we can have this conversation you know what I mean I think that's different eh? especially if you talk to an SME laupan, right? the fellow will jump over hoops for you in my in my experience la. and I mean my laupan friends are all very tofu one, eh? so I feel like all of them truly want the best so as an employer right looking at my resume what are your first thoughts I think to a certain extent it does affect you because there's a whole HR department and then you find something to do uh. then you find a way to grade something that's qualitative Right, just like how it's a flawed system, but not bad system to grade someone according to their education level. Mm. After now, now Singapore, every applicant got a degree already. Then how do we grade? Then we grade work of experience. Okay, so every 30 years old, every 30 year old person got six years of job experience. Now how do we further, further qualify? Mm. So then there'll be a score created for job hopping. So unfortunately, it's outdated practice, but it's still there, right? For me personally, I don't think it's a problem. I think flight risk is a problem. Yes, I will still be concerned about flight risk. So I then, as an employer, I ask you questions that like, why do you change job? Not because I want to try and aha you. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're having this interview despite me seeing your resume is that I want to see whether I have the ability to do what your past employers cannot do for you or not. You Can I one, make you stay? You will take on such a, a role ah, like to challenge yourself. Ah. Not just to challenge myself. Ah. We wouldn't be having this conversation if I didn't think you are a good fit and you have the experience. Mm -hmm. Correct? I already kind of want you eh? I really hope that you can No employer want to go out there And do 500 interviews To hire one person one. Everybody hope to one shot one Kill their person one So the fact that they see you They bloody hope is you You understand or not? Like will it Hinder you from picking This person for interview? Like, not, not necessarily So for me I mean I, I've, I've said this multiple times On the dots connecting right? On dots connecting is that I do believe that Everything you do in your life All lead up to the next moment It may lay dormant for years It may lay It may not It may happen just in five minutes time right but I do feel like the more experience you have the larger breadth of knowledge you have when your moment come right your moment of all the dots connecting right yours will be the most spectacular right and I um, Simon Sinek said this that in the last year you let's say you commute to work every single day you don't have 300 memories of you commuting to work you have about one or two and that's to the breadth of experience that this person have even though they got extensive experience in commuting to work I've done it 300 times you have memory of once or twice to people look, that look at candidates qualitatively I think it's good but I think on the quantitative score right I think HR they are forced to come out with some shit lah, you know I think you might lose out but yes as an employer I do want it to be you and so I do want to see whether and for my environment is different because my environment will be more fun. Yeah. yeah. Mine is a bit more rigid. Uh. So just nice though, if what you're looking for is what I have, then we might be a perfect match. Man. To close off, right? I think what I really want to know is also, are you happy with where I am now? Based on where I am now, do you feel less pressured as a man of the family? Yes. <laughs> I think it's a huge... huge but, I feel like I can die. <laughs> you know? You can leave me be alone already, right? Like, you know, you know, I can handle on my own. Yeah, no, I tell you, it's it's beyond that. I think having having compatible earning power, and I'm not saying same, compatible. So it depends on your personality. It affects the relationship. It affects the dynamics of the relationship. I would hate for one of us to feel like I got a smaller voice because I bring lesser to the table. Mm. Yeah. So I, I feel like right now our relationship is as healthy as it can possibly be, because we are as balanced as we can possibly be. But you will still support me if I really quit my job, right? Yeah. Yes, quit. <laughs> that concludes this vlog. I am very appreciative of you if I've never said that enough. Thank you. I feel that... I feel very secured. And I'm very him. proud of you. Thank you so much. Hmm. Um, I don't know where my career is going to take me. I am con going to continue trying. Wherever it takes me, I just know that I have you lah. <laughs> <laughs>